Yo, what's good Spirit Squad? Today we're going to be playing a Pioneer Challenge because, well, I actually have time to do so, which is fantastic. So we're going to be playing the Is It Prowess list that we just went over a couple of videos ago, and the decklist for that will be right down in the description. But we're going to do a quick once over before the first round starts. Uh, not too much time until that happens, but I'm sure we can bang this out real quick. Let's go over it. So this is going to be the Is It Prowess list that we're playing, and it's not that much different from what we did before. The base of it, pretty easy. We've got some prowess creatures like Monastery Swiss Spear, we've got Soul Scar Mages, and other things that get bigger and reward you for casting spells. Sprite Dragon, which is basically permanent prowess, and of course Ledger Shredder, because this card is busto. The Connive, great. Both you and your opponent will trigger it by casting two spells in the same turn, which is amazing. You get to play Treasure Cruise and Expressive Iteration. So the most busted card that got banned out of Legacy in a pretty long time. Um, just the most busted card that's allowed in every format. There's vintage decks playing four of this thing, so what does that tell you? Everything else, really easy. We've got some good removal, we've got Reckless Rage for better removal, we've got Considers, we've got Ops, a relatively stable mana base. It's only two colors, so that part's nice. And since they're enemy colors, you get to play cards like Spire Bluff Canal instead of kind of crossing your fingers like you generally do when you play blue-white decks. Out of our sideboard, we've got mm, a decent amount of counter magic. We've got Aether Gust for fake counter magic. We've got two copies of Negate and a Mystical Dispute. We did talk last time about why I like Negate more than Spell Pierce, and I still think that's true today. We've got three copies of Rending Volley, two copies of Flame Blessed Bolt, and this is going to be the most notable change in the sideboard. I was playing Crushed a Week previously, and to be honest, Crushed a Week was fine, but I think Flame Blessed Bolt for one mana is going to be a lot better than Crushed a Week even at three. Sometimes you'll just want to cast this on turn two, kill your opponent's Llanowar Elf or something, and just like not really worry about it, versus trying to get cute waiting until turn three, and then potentially being blown out, or having your opponent simply not care about it. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to like this change, but it's what I'm doing today. And then we've got two copies of Redcap Melee. Previously, we did talk about the interaction between Soul Scar Mage and Red Cap Melee, where you are allowed to target a non-red creature with this thing, as long as Soul Scar Mage is on the table. If you do that, you're doing minus one counters and not damage, so you won't actually have to sacrifice anything. That came up last time, I'm sure it'll come up today. The other cards are going to be two copies of Unlicensed Hearse. This card is super good. And since there's delve cards in this format, like of course opposing treasure cruises, you'll be pretty happy to get rid of your opponent's graveyards, even if they're not an obvious graveyard deck. We did see things like Kroxa, which Unlicensed Hearse is great at controlling, but again, less obvious cards like lands and ops and considers and stuff from a lot of your blue opponents will shut them off of cards like treasure cruise and dig through time and that's a really big deal in this format because both of those cards are legal where they're legal basically nowhere else and of course because why would you not we get to play a companion so there's gonna be a gigantha it's gonna be exciting and Honestly, it comes up every now and then, like, you and your opponent are each running out of cards, maybe you don't see a treasure cruise, okay, cool, buy your companion. And now you're attacking with a 5-5 where your opponent's stuck top decking. And, let's be real, a 5-5 attacking is a lot better than most top decks. So, that's gonna be our Is It Prowess list, I will see y'all in round one. Alright, we got round one, Fighting Quiniac, that is a name that I've seen before, we're gonna be on the play, reveal our friend Jeff, and this is going to be a no camera recording today, cause, well, to be quite honest, I don't really feel like getting dressed and knowing all that extra work, but we are gonna keep our hand, this is quite lovely, I've got a one drop I wanna play, a two drop I wanna play, a little bit of card draw here and some great removal so overall pretty happy stuff and starting with this on the play is just like super solid right also can we talk about how super sweet and gorgeous these lands are out of this set like i feel like these are going to be underrated for a pretty long time this one also happens to look like a building that i used to work at <laughs> like if you want to look up the uh, niagara mohawk building in syracuse new york that's exactly what it looks like i'll pull up a picture at some point soon too okay so opponent takes a mole to six and we're just going to start off with Mountain Swift Spear, and I'm going to start off with Mountains and not Steam Vents on the very off chance that opponent doesn't know whether we're playing Mono Red or, um, or is it? Okay, and 
now that the jig is kind of up here, I'm still just going to play my Ledger Shredder and be pretty excited for a potential connive next turn. So let's see what they come up with here. Eidolon. Okay, so they actually are playing Burn. We, of course, are not. Which means I'm going to get rid of this now. And I will take two for the privilege of doing that, but it's kind of what it is, right? And I've already played a land, so I'm just going to play my threat, connive, and ditch the land. Get my attack for one in. And even with the Shivan Reef and the Eidolon at a Great Revel, life totals are still tied, but I'm the one with creatures, so I'm not really complaining too much about this. And if this is just going to be like some spell, then... Oh yeah, I forgot that... Oh my god, this card's busted. Um, <laughs> it's so insane that I get to connive when they start casting shit. Like, how wild is that? So let's just untap here. Oh, this is nice. This is gorgeous. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get to Reckless Rage this. And if they respond with a spell to give minus one counters, I get to Reckless Rage with the other. Or do I just start off with Expressive? And I think the answer is actually start off with Expressive. Because either way, if they respond with a spell, then I still get to just kill off the, um... Oh, that's not bad either. So, in hand, I want Consider. I want this to go back in a deck, and I want to play this now. So, let's play this now. Yes. And the exact same options are still available to me. So, I still don't think I need to actually cast anything here. I can just do this. If they try to get cute with a removal spell, then I'm still good with my double Reckless Rages. I don't think I needed to cast Consider to proc a connive or anything. I don't need to like, you know, get super greedy and press anything when I have... I won't go so far as to say a clear advantage, but I have a definite advantage. Okay, two mana is... a Boros Charm. Four damage to my face. You got it. I cannot counter that. So I'm at 10. Skewer the critics targeting my Ledger Shredder. So now this is where life is going to get just a little bit miserable for them. So I'm going to... Oh, fuck. Well, that sucked. Um, I guess I'm going to do this then. That was the connive. I actually wanted that to be um me just casting in response to that. But oops, the yield button. So that's on me. Anyway, so let's do that. So now the Skewer to Critics is going to do three damage and... I take three and go to four. Yeah. All right. And have I cast two spells? Force Charm, Skewer to Critic, Connive once, Reckless Rage. No, I have not actually cast another spell. So I'm going to wait till their end step just to make sure they're not. Okay. I was going to say they're not going to go like land something else, I guess. Um, Sprite Dragon versus Consider. I want to keep the Consider. I also want to stop in my upkeep to cast that Consider. Oh my god, no. Do not put that in my graveyard. I'm still going to cast this, though. So, play with fire in the graveyard. No, I would like to draw that. Draw a step. Sprite dragon again. So, what are we looking at? They're at 12. I've got 5 showing right now. Another spell, i.e. sprite dragon, is going to connive this. So that puts 6, 7 on the table. Play with fire is 8, 9, 10, 11. That's one short. Hmm. Am I right about that? Or am I like bugging here? Five is showing. This is six, seven, eight, nine. I think that means I want to do this first and look for another burn spell instead of playing this bright dragon. Is that right? Um, getting rid of the dragon, doing this, and I think we found what we were looking for. So hand deck exile, play red face, go to 10, doesn't really matter. Face, doesn't really matter. Hooray. Whew. I'm like, uh-oh, can't count. Help, send help. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, send help. <laughs> Counting is difficult, okay? Um, <laughs> so against the mono red deck, Flame Blessed Bolts, Red Cap Melees, Aether Gusts, I don't particularly want Sprite Dragons, uh, Spike Field Hazard has basically no text, and I don't mind getting rid of one opt here. Everything else is pretty good, so let's do this. So that's going to be 
our sideboarding plan now and let's submit also let's actually show off the sideboarding plan right so here's a companion we do have our lovely friend jeff here and our hand is uh not great but also not terrible i don't mind keeping this soul scar down on a bugbear is not really what i want here so i'm gonna go ahead and use this consider to hopefully dig for a removal spell for this soul scar mage and if this is an eidolon it is not okay kamano is pretty good we are playing another Kamano, yikes. Okay, that means we got a lot of work to do. Uh, Soul Scar, Graveyard, yes. Okay, let's see what we can draw. We can draw Red Cap Melee, all right. Deck, I see you. Um, oh, 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 shoot. I wanna set stops here and remove the stop in my upkeep. Oh my God, I am not very good at clicking buttons today. So let's cast this and I guess I'm gonna hold it up as a blocker. I mean, to be fair, I kind of already wanted to do that anyway, so it's not that bad, but still, yikes. So now if they play a creature with just a giant number of plus one counters on it like this, I will be pretty happy to be able to get rid of it with the red cap melee. So that's not nothing. Are we responding to this with a spell? I hope not. I think the answer is yes, though. Oh, no? All right. So now it's a 3 4. So if they want to cast a spell and proc this, then I'm going to get to kill it, which is nice. So I am going to block here. See if they want to cast something first. No, damn. I. Ugh. Oh, this is not good if they actually have a spell. So I think I'm stuck just taking it. Um. I don't mind trying it now, but I won't lie and say I like it. I could have targeted the Soul Scar Mage for a sure kill, but Monastery Swiss Spear is definitely the bigger threat being a 3-4. And I do have other spells that can clear this out, so nothing about this was ever safe since they have a mana, but I think this is the highest upside play I have access to, so I'm going to try it. And they of course did have a spell. Okay, so like I said, th that was never going to be like a truly high upside play. Um, but I think it is the play that I had, you know, access to. Uh, I don't want that. All right. So now they get multiple 2-2s two out of this as well. Yikes. I um, think this is game three territory. To be fair, I did keep a handful of blue cards and not a handful of red cards. And that's kind of on me with this blistering fast start they had. You know what? I am going to do that as a matter of fact. Let's just go to game three. So... That was really good from them, of course, and I'm not changing anything about what I'm doing, though. I still like our sideboarding plan. I think I should have mulliganed that hand, though, especially on the draw. But if this hand is going to be full of red cards rather than blue cards, then I'll be much more happy about that. Okay, let's play first this time, reveal our friend, and our hand is a... Uh... One that I'm going to learn a lesson from from last game. So this is actually better. It is just as full of blue cards, but it is actually better. Our hand is a lot more dense here without the treasure cruise kind of gumming it up for the first couple of turns. Of course, I'll be grateful to see one around turn three or four. But if I can consider slash opt my way into seeing some reasonable red cards to kill their things with, then this ledger shredder has potential to be a little bit bigger than a one three. Of course, any creatures I draw are likely to be pretty decent. And I'm going to skip out on the Shivan Reef because I don't really want it. So let's see what ends up happening here. Okay, it's a Soul Scar. Got it. So let's go ahead and consider. Steam Vents is one I don't really want right now. Flame Blessed Bolt is one I definitely do want. Perfect. Play with Fire is also really good. So let's do this now before they can mess around with any prowess shenanigans. And here I know I just put a Steam Vents in the graveyard, but I will still be... Uh, I'm just gonna play with fire this. I can wait for ops and stuff until my own turn. And yeah, a treasure cruise. So that'll be good later, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and just develop this. So it does make me a little sad that this treasure cruise wasn't a land because I could have cast one of these and then been okay there. But if this is just like a removal spell for my shredder, then I am sad. Oh, all right, well, it wasn't, so that's good. Uh, play this. I want to cast you. See what our opponent's gonna say about that. Uh, mountain graveyard, yes, please. Expressive. Um, no, what am I doing? I have a treasure cruise right here. Why the hell would I cast the expressive iteration first? <laughs> I seriously thought about that. I'm like, what is wrong with me right now? All right, so let's go ahead and connive away one of these ops. And we draw terribly. 
okay so i don't hate the idea of having like steam vents and then soul scar mage and stuff either so like that's pretty decent and the fact that they just effectively wasted half a turn not killing ledger shredder or doing anything else here i'm pretty happy about that okay is this a chain to the rocks what are we doing here it is a chain to the rocks boo okay so i'm gonna get to connive which is cool i I'm just going to toss one of these extra lands, especially since they're pain lands. I really don't want pain lands against the red deck. So that's going to happen. I'm going to take at least four and go to 14. And then I would greatly prefer a actual red removal spell, like a red cap melee would be excellent here. Are we also putting a shock to my face to do a total of eight? What's happening here? Okay, it looks like the answer is no. We're just going to untap. Um, Another Ledger Shredder. I only kind of want that, if I'm being honest. So let's play you first. Oof. Can I have now... A Flame Blessed Bolt. Okay, that means I'm going to put you... One of you. You. Away. Not that I'm a fan of paying the two life here, but let's... Okay, a tap land is actually not bad for us oh my god we're doing nothing yes let's untap let's untap um that's actually pretty good for us the spire bluff canal because it means i have something that i definitely don't mind pitching to the connive later so that's a thing so let's see what we can dig up here um soul scar consider den i want you in hand you in the deck you in exile and i'm gonna cast you now so i can do this connive pitching spire bluff Pitching that too, drawing another Ledger Shredder, not bad, not great. Um, here I want to just play that first. Oop. Yeah, attack with both. So let's see what our opponent comes up with here. Nothing. Um, I don't know whether I should be really happy or really worried right now. Our mono red opponent doing nothing essentially for a couple of turns is both really scary and potentially really good. What is that? Chandra Torch of Defiance. Um... I am actually going to respond to the Chandra with this. So let's see what happens here. Thanks to me having a Soul Scar Mage. Oh my God. Yes, that just went. All right. Well, that's exciting. Um, They're going to get to kill the Letter Shredder with Chandra. And that is not nothing. However, I already have an Expressive Iteration and a Ledger Shredder. So like, I'm not the saddest about this. Even if this is just like some spell, then I'm okay. I was gonna say then I'm still kind of okay with that. So here what I can do is cast my Ledger Shredder first and then EI with the mana up here, knowing that I can get rid of Steam Vents if I need to, or rather since I want to is more accurate. Um, okay oh hell yeah let's go so that is going in hand let's actually think about this so the reckless rage is something that i can hold off on casting until maybe next turn i do want exactly one more land for this turn sequence but i don't have it so oh well uh here's that i want that in the deck and i want this in exile so i can just cast the swiss spear and use this to go ahead oh no i've already connived never mind um do i want to just reckless rage this swift spear no i think i want to get my attack on chandra and see what they do from there if they just let chandra die then i'll just cast this post combat yeah i think that was actually okay because now i've got a huge board opponent just type gg in the chat Yeah. All right. Well, good stuff to us. We're one and O oh, and uh, looking forward to the next round. Oh my, that is yikes. Understood. All right. We got round two. We're on the play against seventh profit. Okay. So let's go ahead and reveal Jeff here. And what are we playing with here? Uh, not great. Not terrible. I will keep it. So if my opponent's playing something like Winota, where I don't necessarily mind Spike Field hazarding their turn one thing, then that's almost favorable for the type of hand we have. Looks like that's not going to happen, though. So we're playing against what I assume is some Fatal Push pile here. So I think I'm just going to hold off on Ledger Shredder until I can at least get a connive out of it. Blooming Marsh high for the Eye Tyrant, huh? 
All right, Magic the Gathering, what the hell am I playing against today? Put a lovely little stop. So I'm gonna put a stop in my end step because I wanna see if they are gonna like fatal push my friend here. Um, and I honestly don't believe that my spike field hazard is gonna have much other text. So let's just go ahead and get my connive in now while I can. I am going to pitch the steam vents, steam vents. Okay, so it got abrupt decayed. So it was a fatal push esque card. So I guess I'm happy that I was able to get rid of the steam vents there. Cause now Liliana, the last hope annoying, but we can deal with that. So luckily Sprite dragon plus play with fire does clear that out. Um, but it will be pretty easy for our opponent to go ahead and take care of this Sprite dragon. Since they just, like I said, it just looks like they're on some green, black rock deck. Which has got to be a favored matchup for them against this. Uh, what did they play? Murderous Rider. Okay. Five cards means Treasure Cruise and no land. Okay, <laughs> fine. So they can go ahead and just play this copy of Murderous Rider. They can Thought Seize me, which is fine. I don't really think I care too much about this. Like if you're going to Thought Seize and I'm going to get to respond with Treasure Cruises and Expressive Iterations, you know, I am definitely winning that. So it makes me pretty happy to see our opponent just like kind of trying to one for one us on an axis that's not particularly reasonable for them to be able to do so. I am going to go ahead and cast my Swift Spear here and ooh, I am going to skip opt. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do this and resolve the other Swift Spear as well, knowing that I could be walking into some kind of sweeper like, I don't know, say, um languish or shadows verdict or some such nonsense from this right and that's totally a thing that's on the table okay so there's fatal push and anything else looks like a negative but if they're going to be playing like kalidus or something then i'll be pretty happy that we kept reckless rage in hand uh what's that blood chief thirst okay same goes for this murderous rider i can kill it with a reckless rage and then just like buy jeff and the fact that i'm going to be coming out of this with a five five in a turn or two is pretty good for me okay yeah that's fine and knowing that this was an option is kind of exactly why we were wanting to keep the um the reckless rages because like we know they could have something like this we know they could have cards like um kalidus and i'm not the biggest fan of them being able to like kalidus have a third fatal push or whatever to kill this and get a zombie out of it we'll see what actually ends up happening here whoa saltai okay not gonna lie that was not on my checklist them being saltai was not on the checklist um, we don't draw a land, but we do draw an expressive iteration. I am pretty happy about, come on, magic. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> all right, all right. So, to be fair, I am still up, like, an entire two cards on that. And the hands are looking like they're drawing three, and I've got, you know, um, just as many creature lands as they have the ability to activate right now. I was not ready to see this, um, but I've got four cards to their three. I've got one more card than them on the table and keeping up with the deck that's got like, you know, planeswalkers and adventure removals and creature lands and infinite cheap removal. Um, it still feels pretty good from over on this side, right? So let's see if they want to go ahead and use I Hive of the Eye Tyrant again. I don't think they want to, knowing that we have Reckless Rage, but we'll see what ends up happening. They can just like Fatal Push my Swift Spear and then activate. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, so they can activate that too. That's what their plan is there. Sure, you got it. So let's go ahead and opt, see what we come up with. Another Swift Spear, I do like that, which actually means I'm gonna just untap here. Um, I do not have the ability to deal with this twice, but what I can do is cast this now. And if they wanna use all of their mana just to do this, then I think I'm actually pretty okay with this. I'm gonna do this now because I wanna potentially spin myself into like some kind of sorcery not bad though um opponent are you dead yeah i can just cast all three because the reckless rages don't actually need to resolve they just need to be cast for prowess triggers so i think this is gonna be good enough here so let's go ahead let you block so i get to two three four five six seven oh that's one short okay okay i lied i don't want to do that um, yeah, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to cast this one anyway. Like the scry is still pretty strong. 
don't really want that. So they're at three, and I think I'm pretty okay with them just chilling at three. Like, they can't really do too many other things if they want to be able to block with this again. They can't block with this because they know I have the Reckless Rages. What is this? I am fairly curious as to what this could be. Oh, they're just playing their own Ledger Shredder. That's fine. Like, we have double Reckless Rage, so that's honestly completely okay with me. And if they do have the ability to remove my Swift Spear with something, then honestly, so be it. Like, I already can't do too, too much about that. And the fact that I've got two of these Reckless Rages is uh, pretty neat for yours truly. So I think my ideal plan here, right, is to make them fight over Reckless Rages on this turn. I don't really care whether they get to connive. If they have to tap out mana to protect this Ledger Shredder on their turn, then I can untap and use Den of the Bugbear on my turn. If they have a Fatal Push or an Abrupt Decay or something, well, Abrupt Decay doesn't work on the land. Um, right, you say non-land? Yeah, non-land. So that doesn't work. And neither does Blood Chief Thirst. But most other things I think are fairly well handled. Traverse the Ovenwald with three types. I want to let them connive first to see whether they have four types. If they put a fourth type in the graveyard, then I will kill Ledger Shredder now. If they do not have three types still, so I'm just going to let them search for a basic land. I'm not going to put a creature in their graveyard will not work for you the way you want it to, I believe, opponent. And if this gets responded to with just like a fatal push and abrupt decay or something, like I said, like I already wasn't doing anything about that, so whatever. And the fact that, oh, hell yeah, that was actually pretty close to perfect. So now I can have this come up and if I get to make the goblin token, then the prowess plus the goblin token, regardless of whether they can block this, it will end up being pretty much irrelevant. So, oh, that's even better, actually. So let's do that. And I want to reckless rage this first. Make them deal with literally everything. All right, sick. They can't. So that was awesome. And against Sultai midrange, what do I want? I want Unlicensed Hearse because we have seen some graveyard interactions. We've seen Traverse the Ovenwald. And I have to think that our opponent is going to come at us with something like, say, a copy of, um, oh, what card am I thinking of? I don't know, maybe even Big Emrakul? I don't know, I think I just want unlicenses and negates though. Like we've seen um, a decent amount of Planeswalkers and things. We've seen things that, oop, where did that spike field hazard go? There it is. I don't particularly want you right now. And I gotta take out three other cards, all of which I think will be named Play With Fire. So of course the Play With Fire has helped to burn our opponent out here, but I don't really know that we're gonna need to do all of that here. So. And it's not like we saw any copies of things like Grim Flare or anything else that makes us think that removal for exactly two toughness is actually going to be good in this matchup. I don't believe that's going to be the case. So I think we'll just board like this. So cards that do scare me here. I am pretty scared of Elder Gargaroth. I am fairly scared of cards like um, Ishkana. That kind of scares me. I don't really want to see Kalidus, but I understand it's just like a thing they're all going to play. Uh, ship much, much, much better. Oh, and it looks like our opponent mulliganed a six as well, so I feel a lot less bad about this now. Here, I'm going to skip on the basic mountain. Yeah. This is fine. So if they, once again, spend the majority of their turns just like removing things of ours, and then we get to come back later with a treasure cruise, then that's pretty much the ideal scenario for us, right? Like, you know, we want them to fight over cards, fight over cards, fight over cards, and then we just get to come at them with just like, eventually the much better card is the goal here. And... If we can draw like a Reckless Rage or something to deal with this Ledger Shredder, then that'll be pretty great. I don't think they have enough blue threats to have justified Rending Valley. Like we saw Murderous Rider, we saw Liliana, um, and we only saw Ledger Shredder in blue, and we can assume they're playing Kalidus. So um, even though I don't have a removal spell for this Ledger Shredder, oh my god, that's why didn't you do that in the other order? Oh well. A Reckless Rage would still be nice. No? Okay. Um, a little bit worried currently. I do want to put that into the graveyard. Hey! All right! Thanks! 
Um, they will get to connive here, and I won't lie and say I enjoy that fact, but I think getting rid of this now is better than holding up negate for a future planeswalker especially since they can always just like come at us with something like a Kalidus anyway and then just like get rid of my ability to cast a negate i mean i guess i would rather have uh, rec uh, cast reckless rage that was difficult to say at a Kalidus, but you know so far so good i guess abrupt decay gone Okay, and I've got four cards in a graveyard too, so that'll be good to remember slash know. Um, but I am fairly scared of their three drops. Go blank. Boo. Well, that would have been a good reason to hold up negate. Okay, so now we're going to thought seize my last card. Is that what's happening here? All right, guess not. Um, Shivan Reef. I believe I'm going to hold up negate this time. If I draw another land, I will buy Jeff and then hold up negate. But I'm pretty worried about a Planeswalker right now. Okay, nothing. Ledger Shredder is not nothing. So let's do that. All right, opponent, let's see what you got to square up with that. I do like it when the opponents are doing nothing. So let's see if they... I really just want them to, like, try a Planeswalker or something. Um, I will negate that, actually. I'm not guaranteed to have a better target for my negate anyway. So let's... A consider is a pretty good draw, actually. I don't enjoy the fact that they will also get to connive if I get to connive, but... I've got prowess, and if they're currently going to stay doing nothing, then I will... They pitched Murderous Rider. What the hell is in your hand? Okay, so we're going to get two damage through now, and wonder pretty hard at what our opponent chose to keep here. I am super curious, not going to lie. I also have doubts as to... What was that? Legion's End? Okay. I was gonna say, I also have doubts as to- oh no, come on. No, I wanted that! Oh, that's unfortunate. That really sucks, actually. Alright, let's buy Jeff. Um, oh, that's rough. Alright, and they're making more land drops than we are, too. So, I'm, uh, currently a little scared, not gonna lie. Okay, not doing anything about that. Going to 12, and end step, end step. Got it. So, let's draw ourselves- oh, an EI, that's good. I will, in fact, cast that. What do we get? Are you potentially negating that? No, you're not. Okay. Um, oh my God. So many cards. I want... Oh, the EI is going to go into the graveyard too. Right. That's important. So now I get to Swift Spear in hand. Expressive in the deck in Treasure Cruise in Exile. Because there's seven cards in the graveyard now. So I get to just like do all of these cool things. Um swift spear here they are gonna get to connive i think that's fine because i'm gonna get to draw three so i mean assuming of course the treasure cruise resolves but like you know if it didn't resolve then what else was i ever gonna do about it anyway so let's see what they're gonna get rid of with connive here they got rid of drown in the lock okay man this really is just like an everything pile huh all right one two three four five six seven hell yeah it actually did nice won't lie and say I fully expected that, but we definitely take that. So let's go ahead and attack them here. So they take five and go to six, assuming no removal spell. Uh, Shark Typhoon, come on. <laughs> All right, so I guess they take three. Um, F, oh, giant, giant F. I'm so sick of dealing with this card. <laughs> All right, so they're playing around me potentially having like an opt or something. So it's like, do I definitely want to block three slash four or do I want to try to gamble on blocking the Monastery Swiss Spear? I'm a little curious as to what they're going to do. Of course, we know that we don't have an opt or anything right now. So like, but they might just, okay, okay. So they are going to gamble and they're going to win the gamble. So I don't know. Color me upset, I guess. Uh, Go. A scavenging ooze. Annoying. So to get to activate that twice, they're going to gain two, go to ten. I take this and go to three. Yikes. So this has got four toughness. And what can I do about most of these things? I think the answer is close to nothing, but I want to give myself at least a chance to try to fight here. So let's do that. Um, Play with fire, opt, and steam vent, huh? Uh, hand, go away, exile. Is there another creature in here? There is a Ledger Shredder. Oh, you don't have green mana. Never mind. Um, Reckless Rage. Can't do much about that. <clears throat> uh, play this. Use it for the opt. Uh, can't use that. Swift Spear? 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, one short. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, one short. Stupid freaking scavenging goose. I'm so mad right now. All right, all right, fine. <laughs> ah, rage. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, here I want. I am going to put in two of these rending volleys. Um, since we saw the shark typhoon on top of the ledger shredders, I now think it's a lot more worth, right? Um, and I'm actually going to do that as well. So let's just skip out on all of the play with fires. So play with fire, of course, can tag the two drop scavenging goose that we saw. And scavenging goose is a pretty big pain in the ass. I don't know that that's enough to play the play with fires over negate. I am going to stick... Actually, I could play Unlicensed Hearse better against the Graveyard stuffs. I think I like the Unlicensed Hearse better, especially on the play, because um, I can just play like a turn one prowess creature, turn two Unlicensed Hearse. This is fine. Like, this hand's certainly keepable. So let's Spire Bluff Canal pass, and let's see what their turn one contains. I haven't seen a single Thought Seize out of them, I think, in game two, so I don't necessarily know that they have it. Uh, Ledger Shredder, Soul Scar Mage, Reckless. Starting with Sprite Dragon. So I'm gonna start with Sprite Dragon because like they already don't have the mana to play Liliana here. And if they want to use like an Abrupt Decay or something, Unlicensed Hearse is annoying, but we... Okay. Okay. So, um, I want to play you as red. Here's this. Here's this. Pitch this. Attack here. So I've got double Reckless Rage and an Opt now, so if they're going to try to combat me with their own Ledger Shredder, that's not going to work too well. If they have some kind of Sweeper, then that really sucks, but I can't currently do anything about that. Um, that's annoying, but fine. Uh, Treasure Cruise is unfortunately not really a card against this Unlicensed Hearse, so let's just start here. Casting the Opt, drawing a Consider, don't mind if I do, and attack. I'm on turn four. What are we doing here? Abrupt Decay my dragon. Yeah, sure. I'm still going to consider here, though. Um, get the extra point in here, and I actually don't want to skip that. No, I do want to make that land drop. Uh, Alright, go. Uh, it is so hard to cast a Treasure Cruise against Unlicensed Hearse. So... What I want to do here is just like make a bunch of land drops, right? Eventually, I'll just be able to cash Treasure Cruise for like five or six mana. And to be honest, that's still good enough against a deck that's trying to wear you out of cards. So it's certainly not preferable, but it's not zero options either. So what's this? And if this is just like a Shark Typhoon cycle, then okay, sure, nothing. So let's Soul Scar Mage. Let's buy our lovely friend Jeff. And it was in fact a Shark Typhoon, okay. And that's actually fine because we've got the Reckless Rage already, so we can, we can navigate past just like a Shark Typhoon token. And if the Shark Typhoon really wants to go ahead and act as fuel for Unlicensed Hearse, then I will be pretty happy to double Reckless Rage that Unlicensed Hearse. Like that card just kind of needs to get the hell out of our face. What is this? Graveyard Trespasser. They really hate our graveyard. Okay. Opponent does not approve of the graveyard. Okay. A Rending Valley. That's actually not bad so things i can do i can't cast jeff right now i can rending volley here they crew i can reckless rage this to give minus counters because i have soul scar and if they try to block i can reckless rage this again i don't hate that let's start oh you know what maybe i could have double reckless raged and then held up the um rending valley as the surprise rather than the other factor that might have been better oh well I'm attacking. So hopefully one of their cards in hand is not named Fatal Push. That would really be awful. Okay. Oh, uh, no. All right. So I am going to do this then. So we're going to make this a 2-2. Two -two, and they can exile these two cards if they want. But then they don't have an Unlicensed Hearse anymore, which is kind of the goal. Why are you alive? Oh, they put more counters on it. Ah, oh, shit. Well, now I'm just stupid because I had the other one. I'm still going to do it, but I'm really... Oh, God, that felt so bad now. Oh, I could have just done it and then... Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so we wasted a card. That's... Yikes. That didn't feel good. Um, if we... Don't get me wrong. This Graveyard Trespasser is still going to make it harder to cast our Treasure Cruise. Uh, they have four card types, too. Yikes. So now this can just be like a Kalidus or something. Oh, man. We might have thrown Ishkana. Oh, that's bad, too. 
Oh, God, I was literally talking about how scared I was of that. Um, I don't think we can win this game. Yeah, they're still at 12. I don't mind backing it up here. Let's just move to the next round. <laughs> All right, we got round three. We're playing against Mitchell Sox, and we're waiting for an answer to the question I asked them about their username because I don't know if it's their socks. Is somebody else named Mitchell? Or are they saying Mitchell sucks, but that wasn't allowed to be typed? Either way, we're on the play. So I'll let you know if they answer this question because inquiring minds would like to know. And our hand is pretty good, especially if our opponent's on some creature deck. So we've got a couple of one point removal spells here, a one drop, a couple of good two drops, and uh, Mitchell sucks, moles to six. So let's start off with our friend Soulscar Mage and go from there. Temple Garden. Are we being Winoted? I feel like we're being Winoted. Let's do the untap. And then we just get to go ahead and start off with our Sprite Dragon because we're on the play, right? So like that actually makes life a lot better. Ooh. I lied about Sprite Dragon. So this is especially cool if they want to try to do something cute, like say Brutal Cathar on Ledger Shredder, then we'll be able to go ahead, Reckless Rage to Brutal Cathar, rescue our friend Ledger Shredder, and if we have another land, we might, um, Kiki Token, okay, that's fine. Let's draw a land. Mm, you know, we could also not, I suppose that's an option. Um, let's go ahead and get our attack on here. So I'm going to go ahead and Reckless Rage to Goblin Shaman token before combat starts so that it doesn't get a treasure, but also Reckless Rage a Winota if they cast it. If they cast a cat car instead, then yeah, sure, I guess I'll feel a little stupid here. Getting rid of two Elvish Mystics, oh man. Are we Winota? No, we're a cat car, boo. All right, fine. Um. I guess that means I actually will let them have the um, the treasure token here because I can just block with Soul Scar Mage, right? Oh, boo. Not going to let me have that either. All right. I'm still going to do it. <clears throat> and I want to do that as well. And I want to hit a land, please. Mm, that wasn't quite a land. All right. And Swiss Spear's not fantastic here. So let's untap. So now they're not going to be able to crew the cat car without help, which is nice. But also, no, I already have one. Thank you, though. Uh, this is uh, not preferable, not going to lie. So they are going down to 10, which is nice. But this hand needs a lot of help currently. So they're going to get to do that, crew the chariot, make a Kiki token. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. A voice of resurgence is also annoying. So let's see. Oh, they're attacking with all, leaving themselves open to an attack. They're at 10. So I don't think they're going to end up being punished by this, but it has the room to get a little precarious. So let's see if we can maybe punish a little. Certainly going to try. Come on. Come on, magic. Why? <laughs> oh, hey. All right. Um... I don't see us getting out of this now. Um, so they take this, they go to eight. I can block with Ledger Shredder and potentially have a, a good attack on the way back. I can cast Treasure Cruise next turn. So that's not nothing. Uh, Brutal Cathar on my Ledger Shredder. Great. Uh, that means I'm just dead on the spot, doesn't it? Yeah. Use this, crew this, have mana. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're dead. All right. GG's. Um, so against Winota, what I want is all of these removal spots and none of the QT opt and consider things. So let's also put in an Aether Gust. I don't mind that as a one-off. So we're going to do that. This is going to be our sideboarding plan. Let's take out all the cantrips. And uh, Mitchell Socks, it's a play on Mitchell's last name. Got it. Okay. So we're going to play first. We're going to reveal our friend here. And what does our hand look like? Our hand is uh, 
actually okay. So I get to turn one, hopefully ping an elf. Turn two, I can potentially draw a creature in Reckless Rage something, or just chill for a turn three expressive. Whatever. So we'll see what ends up happening here. I am pleasantly surprised our opponent answered. Um, so this looks to be like a rending volley, so I'll just untap. And if it's a creature, it's not. I think I actually like the fact that it's not a creature. So now I can go ahead and just kind of EI here, and I'm not going to be able to beat a copy of Rending Volley with my flyers, which is fine. Um, I do have the potential to EI, make some land drops, and then just like play a lot of magic from here. Um, so things I want. I want... Do I want the land drop more than the sprite dragon, knowing that they're almost definitely holding a rending volley? No, I think I want to just make them use it. So let's do that. This and this. Play the Spire Buff Canal. And hold up my seven cards and pass. So let's see what this is going to be. I, uh, uh, Fable at a Mirror Breaker. Can't really do much about that. So here I think I'm going to... I'm just going to play with fire now. I'm not going to get cute. So what I was thinking is that I could play with fire and... I, hmm, yeah, I'm still just gonna do this, I think. Make our land drop, and then just go ahead and get an attack in. So we know full well they can just go ahead and untap Rending Valley. Um, and if they come up with white mana through the fable here, then they will just go ahead and be able to cast a Winota. But if they spend their entire turn casting Winota, I don't mind Rending Valleying that. Uh, Deafening Silence, okay. That's a thing. So what are you? A voice of resurgence. That does suck. Okay. We can currently beat that, but it's not the best. I'm also not looking forward to catching what I have to assume is a rending valley here. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's fine. Opponent, you kind of told us you had that the whole time, and dang it. I'm gonna dig a little and see if I can't find a flame blessed bolt to deal with this cleanly. Uh, looks like the answer is no. Okay, so uh hand deck exile play this and i want to run this back so starting next turn assuming i don't just like die to something really wild right like they can untap winota attack with voice of resurgence and then like turn it into a grave titan and there's not really much i can do about that if that ends up happening then yeah sure i got got but i think Given what we had, oh no, come on, not like this. Please spin just like nothing of importance. Elite Spellbinder. That's actually not that bad because they can take the treasure cruise, but I can just like delve for that later anyway. Um, this is actually okay. So the cool part about treasure cruise, the way it works with Elite Spellbinder, is that you can still cast it for a literal one mana. You just need to delve nine cards if you do that. Uh, Soul Scar Mage. Uh, I think I want to do one of these and one of these. And I'm going to do it like that so that I, of course, get my clean attack off right now, which is nice, obviously. That's kind of what I want there. Um, but now I have access to a Reckless Rage to protect against like Kiki doing something else too. And if Kiki specifically targets one of these two, then I'll be glad to use a Rending Valley there. <laughs> so that's not the worst i don't know that it's the best but it's certainly not the worst and remember we're still fueling ourselves towards our treasure cruise which costs a total of 10 and i've got six cards right here prosperous innkeeper is fine what are you casting a cat car okay um i need to rending valley the elemental token now if i'm ever going to do it so i'm going to do that I'm going to choose that over the Reckless Rage, because I can Reckless Rage anything here, but I can't Rending Valley anything here. Oh, fuck, I'm stupid. At least it's still going to get minus one counters. So I'm still going to feel pretty stupid about that. Oh, God. We're so bad. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so bad at this game right now. Um, 7, 10, 13. I'm at 15. I guess I'm just going to block the seven. Oh man, I feel really dumb though. So that's fine because this is also, well, you're a little late, but that's okay. So I want to cast, that gives me exactly the nine cards I need to cast my treasure cruise. I, that's two mistakes. Damn it. It was at two toughness. 
and it's got the same stupid text. So I could have just actually no 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 because they can just crew um Isika's chariot. Never mind. I was gonna say I could just kill two other creatures and then it'll still be able to um it'll live with one toughness if I kill two other creatures. So I still think it was not good, but it was not as bad as I thought it was. Just not as absolutely dog shit terrible as I thought I was. <laughs> Alright, let's get an attack in now. So, I've got two Reckless Rages, which does protect me pretty well against just about everything they could do in theory, including holding back Elite Spellbinder for a block. So, they can crew the cat car, I can Reckless Rage that, and if they Brutal Cathar my Sprite Dragon, I can put the trigger on the stack and Reckless Rage it, preventing them from exiling my dragon. Um, that leaves me only to fend off the Elite Spellbinder, which honestly shouldn't be the most difficult of tasks. So, mistakes aside, I still feel fairly confident about the way this is going. Doesn't mean I'm happy about the way I've played it, but I still feel like we can win this game. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and crew the Chariot. So, that's fine because it's not gonna get to attack, which is kind of the entire goal so let's kill you with you okay so now they can get an attack off here and they are holding back the blocker which means that i'm gonna be pretty happy to reckless rage that as well uh so that's pretty good so now we're just gonna wait for the end step and step is here draw a shivan reef okay so we are in fact gonna clear out the blocker and they pack it up sick so let's go ahead and move to game three we're gonna keep the sideboard the same and hopefully we obviously make less mistakes but also i would like to be able to clear out something like the voice of resurgence with potentially a flame blessed bolt so that we just don't even have to deal with that entire problem right like the exiling part of that card is really good for us here if that's what ends up happening and if that's not the way it lines up then i'll still be pretty happy to see other removal spots against things like winota herself this is okay. Two Ledger Shredders, Swift Spear, two Reckless Rages. Um, yeah, not really gonna complain too much about this, so let's just go ahead and... Oh, we have a nothing. Okay, so a nothing means that I am going to just use my Swift Spear now and get some damage in. And also, this being a red land means that we're not looking at Voice of Resurgence, which is nice. Okay, a Soul Scar Mage, noted understood so i'm just gonna do this and kind of give them like the nana nana boo boo at not being able to um rending volley this thing if they have something like a stomp then whatever you got me but so far i'll be pretty happy to fend off their rending volley start with just doing this and if this is going to be just like a fable of the mirror breaker then there's the voice resurgence okay so now i would really love to see a flame blessed bolt please and thank you deck not quite not bad but not quite so let's do this and get an attack in boop 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 if you want to block i will happily reckless rage you looks like that's not happening okay and i am a little sad about not having a third land here but if you're gonna go to 12 then i will risk exactly one winota attack okay are we a cat car or are we winota we are cat car okay clearly a lot worse for us but i still believe we can play magic here that helps a lot so i know that we went over this on our last video with this deck but this is actually ultra sweet here even though they have no red cards so the way this interaction works is that if i go ahead and attack they block whatever i red cap melee one of their non-green i'm sorry one of their non-red creatures because i have soul scar mage i'm never actually dealing damage to the creature i'm putting minus one counters on their creature meaning that no damage was dealt so i don't have to sacrifice a land even though i'm not targeting something red here so that's gonna work out pretty lovely for me and i'm going to keep up the pressure because we know that is an interaction we have access to so i can just go ahead and attack fairly freely here one two three and if they want to double block then i will not be the saddest person in the universe to just go ahead and get off a pretty sweet removal spell on one of these things i do really want a third land because casting a ledger shredder at any point here would have been absolute gas but i don't think i can afford to not have removal up um okay soul scar mage so i'm going to reckless rage here and here and now if they want to crew i'm gonna be able to shoot down the asika's chariot as well so let's see if oh hell yeah hashtag juicy <laughs> all right that was sweet so now my job is to simply not die that's my goal don't die 
not exactly doing a great job of helping me to not die. A replacement Winota? No blockers? What? All right, sick. Um, so we're two and one. Let's move on to the next round. All right, we on round four. We are very good at the die roll today, apparently. So let's reveal our friend Jeff, see what we're about to fight against. Kwazu's prodigy? I wonder who Kwazu is. I'm going to look that up. Maybe Kwazu's like some, I don't know, game reference maybe? K-O-U-A-Z-O. -O. Our hand is also fine. Lutri, oh man, we're playing against the Grixis deck? Oh, hell yeah. All right, so, oh, this is... All right, so I'm telling our opponent, like, yo, Lutri deck is doing the winning. I love everything about this, mostly because that is true. Um, <laughs> I don't want our opponent to beat me for the sake of self-interest but i definitely want my opponent to win this entire tournament anyway just because they're playing this all right so they fiery impulse my friend and it's kind of what it is right so let's go ahead here and start off with our threat number two sprite dragon <laughs> all right Boop. needle surge so we're playing a jeskai version of this deck okay fine so let's start off with opt and i'm gonna play the land first just in case I need to, like, I don't know, cast more spells in response to another thing. Um, <clears throat> Spire Bluff Canal I do not want. Den of the Bugbear I kind of do. I'm still not going to walk myself into another removal spell, so I'm just going to accept my two damage and be happy with it. At the end of turn, I can cast my Play With Fire and Spike Field Hazard, and that does a couple of cool things for us, right? Like, it gets us a little closer to being able to cast Treasure Cruise, it grows our friend Sprite Dragon, and against this deck, I don't really see us having too much of a use for, um... Spike Field Hazard anyway, so it's not like a wasted cast or anything like that. So if this is a damage-based removal spell, please let it be two damage. Three damage, boo! Well, actually, it's four, because it's red, red, red. Um, yeah, all right. I'm still going to do this because I want to scry. It's not going to protect my Sprite Dragon, and I am aware of that. Consider. Consider is actually not bad. So I am going to cast Friend Consider here, and let's see what we get. It's a Ledger Shredder. Hell no, I'm not going to put that into the graveyard. And now I've got six cards in the graveyard too. So that means I can pay just two mana for my Treasure Cruise and kind of go off from there. We've spent a lot of time slash empty space, a medium to decent amount of nothing. They bought Lutri. Okay, that means I am definitely casting this now. One, two, three, four, five, six... And I suppose I, okay, never mind. I was going to say, I suppose that might have been like a medium to small mistake, considering the fact that they um, could have, oh, that's good too. I am going to ditch the Reckless Rage. I think that has the least text here. So I can clear Lutri with Play With Fire. I can consider EI is a pretty good thing to do. Our opponent's got Lutri in hand, so I need to be a little worried about doubled up removal spells, but if they're all like damage based and I don't even know if that's true, I think I'm just gonna untap here. Um, so let me, if you cast it, copy an instant or sorcery spell you control, you can choose new targets. Okay, so if I cast an EI here, they're not gonna be able to count or copy it, and that's what I was looking to find out. So they can, of course, counterspell this with like, I don't know, an absorb a Dovin's Veto or whatever. Whatever. And then, like, win a counterspell war like that. Um, keep, ship, and here I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get a sweet attack on. If it's damage based, then I'm gonna be really glad with just. You know what? They didn't put Lutri in the block. I think I'm just gonna take my damage here. Don't think I wanna press any buttons here. I think I just wanna let this rock. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna let this rock. Like, I've got a couple of threats, I've got a creature land, um, I've got some burn spells, we are Otawaring my friend here. Yeah, sure, you got it. And six isn't exactly the highest life total for them either, so I'm okay to just do this, I think. Uh, graveyard, yes. Swift Spear is good, Swift Spear is good. See if you're doing anything about that. Render silent and I can't cast spells. That means I'm doing this. Okay. Are we gonna let this play with fire slot? Ooh, I want that. Um, I'm gonna cast the other one. See if this is gonna slide. Spell pierce. That's fine because I'm still gonna get the prowess trigger. So now unless this is like oh yes, sick. Um admittedly that was pretty cool though. So We've got Mystical Dispute, a couple of Negates. Do I want to play Rending Valley not knowing what their threats are? I think the answer is no. I'm gonna go ahead and just take these three against our Lutri Control opponent here and 
we're gonna take out things that are just not as strong in this matchup right like one of these a couple of these and i actually think that's all i want to do i think that's really it like everything else is just establish our threats do our job and then reload with cards like ei and treasure cruise i think i like this so let's So we're going to run it like that. We're going to take out some of these red cards, have a couple of more blue cards to interact with them. But I don't think we really want to OD. For example, I don't think I want to... Oh my god, I have Reckless Rage. Whoops. Um, we're going to change that. So I'm actually going to put back these Play With Fires, because they are definitely better than Reckless Rages. And I'm going to put in two Unlicensed Hearse. Yeah, that's a lot better. Whoops. Almost missed that. That would have been embarrassing to draw one of those against a deck that almost definitely has like four creatures at most, right? <laughs> like, yeah, we don't really want to mess around and do that to ourselves. But this deck could have really anything in it, right? Like, they could have things like Supreme Verdict. They could have things like the Wandering Emperor. Um, this hand is okay. I don't hate this. I am going to keep our hand and see what our opponent's gonna cook up here so it looks like the answer for turn one at least is absolutely nothing which is fine they can develop their land and call it a day i am going to actually do the same since we don't have a turn one threat so i don't know how i feel specifically about showing our opponent that we definitely didn't have a i don't know say a copy of um you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hold up negate in case they have narset they can only have one narset but a narset does really really body my ledger shredder and they had the sensor anyway so now i feel okay about playing around it sick all right what do we got they bought lutri okay got it um so now i can they bought lutri is what they did okay i had to think about that i'm like wait a minute what thing was i just trying to pay attention to um so i'm gonna start with ledger shredder and then kind of go from there so let's see what our opponent's going to come up with. If they have one of those Lutri turns, the nature of Lutri is such that I'll be able to play with Fire It. And we've got a lot of stuff going on here too, so that part's kind of cool. They have their own Ledger Shredder. Not too, too much I can do about that currently. Lightning Strike. So that's not going to work because I'm going to get to connive. Yeah, so I'm just going to discard this Play With Fire and my thing's going to live and it's going to be wonderful for just one of us. Um, Yeah, opponent, I don't think that was it. So you're gonna get to connive which is fine for you but like is that really the spell you wanted to cast i don't know about that one and they discarded oh i really don't know how i feel about that now um so i guess i'm gonna start with casting ei of my own um do i have an effective way to attack into this thing the answer might actually be no so i think i'm just gonna attack with my ledger shredder as is they see play with fire so it is likely they think I might have another one cooking. Yeah, so they just take the damage. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So here I'm just going to cast Sprite Dragon and hold up Negate and pass the turn. And I think that gives me the most efficient route to being able to have like a big bad attacker, you know? If they have a removal spell for the Sprite Dragon, I don't necessarily mind using my Negate on it. If they have a nothing, oh, well, that's certainly fine. And if this is just going to be like what a um supreme verdict i'm good with that too if i'm being honest so let's just untap here another consider i don't hate that so i'm still going to and i think i'm gonna do this even though i played my land so i understand that making the land drop wasn't necessarily the best thing to do first but remembering that our opponent is playing damage based removal spells i want to have as much mana up as possible to grow these two to kind of ridiculous lengths and if that means skipping a land drop from this then so be it and i'm actually really good with that so let's put this in my hand that in the deck that in exile and i will in fact cast this even though i know my opponent it's gonna get to connive so i'm gonna get to connive my opponent's gonna get to connive everybody connives i am lots and lots of spells and things so what's our opponent gonna do here four mana is a war leader's helix holy shit that's cool um what are you targeting you're targeting the ledger shredder i uh, is that worth a negate that might be worth a negate um upsides of negating this of course my ledger shredder lives and i get to give another point of toughness and they don't get the four life downsides they can immediately slam a teferi five i'm going to keep my threat alive and 
pray that they don't have their one of to fairy five. So we are each going to get to connive, and that's not going to go so far as to say whatever, but it's going to happen. I'm going to pitch a consider. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not pitching that. That's staying right where it is. So any of these cards that help me play really nicely around um, Supreme Verdict effects, like Unlicensed Hearse, those are all cards I definitely want a part of. And I assume that our Lutri opponent is playing some... Oh, is Lutri non-land? It is non-land. Cool. Okay, okay. So this is actually exactly why I wanted to keep the Unlicensed Hearse on top, though, because I can... This turn, I just get to do everything. So I get to cast this, and I, I really want this to resolve. So I am a lot less worried about, like, Mystical Dispute now that I'm casting this as the first card, right? And I get to cast this now... And if their last thing is going to be like some kind of counter spell other than Dovin's Veto, oh, well, now it can't be Dovin's Veto. Um, yeah, like this makes me extremely happy. I get to unlicense Hearse away their things. If they're going to come at me with something like a Torrential Gear Hulk, I get to Mystical Dispute and unlicense Hearse that. So let's take some cards out of your graveyard. I'm going to take Spells first, War Leader's Helix, and Lightning Strike. And I'm not going to consider here. Still good. Uh, let's EI. See what we can come up with. Oh, my. Yes. Hard, hard, yes. Um, oh, why? Okay. I don't know why Moto's doing the thing where, like, it wants me to perform more actions on a stack, but, like, I don't want to perform more actions on a stack. I just want to, like, cast my stuff. Oh, well. So, let's... So, cards I would not like to see include Settle the Wreckage, Shark Typhoon. Um, oh, please don't actually have a Shark Typhoon. That would suck a lot. Stop. I can consider into another spell. I guess I'm going to spin to consider and see what we get. And I, they're going to cast Lutri into this. A Ledger Shredder in my graveyard? No. I'm just going to draw that. And they can just have their stomp. Oh, are you casting Lutri? I'll be pretty happy to Mystical Dispute that. Okay, okay. So you take your two here. Oh no, we talked about this. All right, so it was a copy of the Wandering Emperor. Okay. That sucks. You got me. Um, yep. Okay. So that's going to happen. I can't really do much about that. And I've only got four cards in my graveyard. So I think I'm just going to untap here. And if we get to worry about Bone Crusher Giant plus like a plus one counter on it, that's not that bad because we made sure to keep a Ledger Shredder up. Uh, Unlicensed Hearse is going to be able to get fairly large pretty soon, which is nice. Uh, you got that. It's a 5-4. And that is is annoying but it's not annoying enough for me to care about yet i believe untap so kenzin's actively very good here so things i can do i can cast ledger shredder for two immediately one two three four and hold up mystical dispute shit that's lit let's do that um one two three four one two three four yeah and even at four mana treasure cruise is still great um i'm gonna keep sakenzin in hand see if we can get away with drawing three cards oh my god we can that means i want to actually play the sakenzin let me think about this so if i play the sakenzin instead i can cast my soul scar mage yeah I actually like doing that more. So I'm going to cast my Soul Scar Mage. And doing that allows me to crew the Unlicensed Hearse really easily. And if they want to just attack with Bone Crusher Giant as a 5-4 um, a or even a 6 cost, I'm sorry, a 6 power creature, I'm still just going to like let that slide, right? Uh, yeah, that's fine. So we're going to get to do that and take our 6, and that's honestly whatever. I don't really care about that yet. We're still at 17 going to 11, so that's kind of fine. And they've already used their Supreme Verdict, and I'm definitely not about to do the thing where I could have blocked this thing and then exiled two cards to make this a six, but I have two problems with that. First, Wandering Emperor gives first strike anyway, so that's just a bad plan. But even if it wasn't, I still don't want to necessarily worry about the Wandering Emperor being able to exile it post-combat. And what's this? Dig through time. Well, that sucks. I mean, not for them. Uh, yeah. If they cast Lutri, I will very happily Mystical Dispute it. Oh, no, just, okay. Dig through time is pretty freaking lit though. Let's untap. I'm going to get to do a lot of cool stuff here, I think. So first, I'm going to cast this. 
and then I get to have all kinds of ops and stuff. Um, <laughs> I have options. Um, <laughs> don't mind me. I'll be here all night. Okay, so now we're casting a flame blessed bolt and we're attempting to loot tree it. Yes, we are. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to connive first. Pitching this, doing this, go away. Lutri. Flame Blessed Bolt is still threatening three, so I'm gonna make it four. Conniving this. I do want that. I mean, our opponent is not exact. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say they are uh, not exactly long for this world, but their deck was really cool. I am a huge fan of Lutri just because it always does something unique, right? Like, you just never really see that, especially not in the winner's bracket. So, good stuff to our opponent, and uh, let's move on to the next round. All right, we're on round uh, five. Five sounds right. Uh, die roll chronicles continue. All right, what up, Karna33? This hand is fine with me. Let's see what we are up to here. Well, I know what we're up to. We're playing a Soul Scar Mage, but I am very curious as to what my opponent's up to. Soul Scar Mage deployed. Mistgate pathway. Are we playing against blue white spirits? Or are we just playing against blue white control that happen to have Mistgate pathway as their first land? All right, let's go ahead and get an attack in. And we will find out in a second what our opponent's up to. Are you a Spectral Sailor? You are! Hell yeah! All right, let's go. Um, Playing the good stuff. Love to see it. Smile. And I do have a stop set in my end step, so I don't actually need to like wait to untap or anything like that. I can just do this now. <clears throat> So if they're blue white and it turns out that they're not playing like a curious obsession version like the one we highlighted a couple of weeks ago and instead they just go ahead and fight us down with a oh nope never mind I was gonna say a watcher of spheres but it looks like that's not what's happening here so this could really be anything for two mana right this could be a supreme phantom they're just gonna tap out a shackle geist they're just gonna tap out they could be holding up a lofty denial or a geist light snare two mana can really mean anything out of this deck so i am medium curious to see where this is going only medium though because i don't actually want them to do the bad stuff to us i just acknowledge that it can happen right <laughs> and we're gonna have to look out in games two and three because a lot of this stuff okay so it is in fact the supreme phantom got it so here I'm just going to look for like a reckless rate. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> All right. And we even get a monastery swift spear. Nice. Nice. And I am definitely just going to kill this now. Like the fewer spirits are on the table, the better our prospects look. And the likelihood of us actually beating most of their draws after they get to do something really impressive with um supreme phantoms it just goes really downhill from there anytime we let creatures get on a table like you know if you're a long time watcher of this channel i don't really have to tell you how good it is to untap with a supreme phantom on a table like those games will just end so let's see so is this just like us holding up a spell queller or what's happening here i would like to see another removal spell but if we don't get it then honestly that's kind of okay I almost want them to just like play an Empyrean Eagle so I can express Evideration into a removal spell and maybe get to do something like that. But it looks like we're just holding up a naked spell queller. So a mountain. A mountain's not really what I want. And to be honest, I don't want to give them a chance to use the spell queller either. So I'm actually just going to buy Jeff and pass the turn because I'm definitely not about to walk myself into a 2-3 for no reason. That just sounds awful. And if I can stop them from kidnapping a spell, then that plays too. A Nebelgast Herald. Shit, that's cool. I haven't seen you in a while. So I hope you tap my... Yes! Because I wanted to attack with the other one anyway. All right. So I assume they're not going to block for fear of me just having like an opt or something. If they do, then whatever. I don't mind this trade. Nebelgast Herald is cool as shit though. Man, I want to be playing that now. <laughs> I'm like making myself jealous of how cool the spirits are by watching them play it. Watcher the spheres, okay. So now they can jam a Supreme Phantom in my face. Uh, okay. Or they can just like jam a Rattle Chains and protect the Nebelgast Herald. So we need to be a little careful. Any removal spells that we see are going to need to be pointed at Watcher first because we know Rattle Chains is a possibility. So first since they don't have access to spell queller right now i'm gonna jam my ei oh my that's strong um i want this in hand i want all three of these cards if i'm being completely honest um but i'm gonna put you back and play you so that i have access to this sprite dragon right now 
it is the rattle chains nice so this is gonna go fairly well since they're gonna go ahead and tap our friend but i'm going to get to respond to that by killing off the nebelgast herald so this is gonna be a three three um and then actually is fine so whatever they tap is gonna be the one that i do two damage to so now if you want to trade a double block for justice swift spear i will totally let you do that didn't think so and i also get to jam treasure cruise next turn so that's pretty sweet they can just like double empyrean eagle and that sucks there's one hopefully you don't have another please don't have another <laughs> that would not be great for me so what do we have here i have a three mana treasure cruise which does lose to Lofty Denial, but it does not get got by a two mana spell Queller. So we can gamble a little bit on whether they have Lofty Denial by just casting the Treasure Cruise. If I draw a removal spell, I will cast that first so that I can get something else out of their hand, like say a spell Queller, another Rattle Chains, or even a Supreme Phantom to just pump. Any of those would be a half decent route for us to just be able to resolve our treasure cruise which is really kind of my end goal here i could also just like jam jeff but i don't think that's a good plan oh <laughs> our opponent saying uh playing a vintage cube match and i'm almost done i need to stop double queuing <laughs> there and so i just told the opponent like i i legitimately do not care if my opponents decide to double queue it's not like you're wasting too much of my time or anything like that um <clears throat> there so what i told the opponent was you know it's whatever i don't really care go off and they said literally because you know they're playing vintage cube so it is quite easy for them to go off and do whatever combo their deck does and of course i decided to ask them but you know maybe not in this match if you'd be so kind because well i'm your opponent i don't have your best interest in mind but vintage cube is hella fun so if you're playing on match online and you have not played the vintage cube before i uh, highly recommend it's a great time oh hey we have game actions okay so we're being attacked for six here and i'm kind of tempted to block with my sprite dragon um if they flash in a supreme phantom or another empyrean eagle that sucks though so i guess i'm just gonna take this and go to 12 so let's see if they do in fact flash in another empyrean eagle if this was some other x2 creature and not a rattle chains or if i had one more power on this sprite dragon it was in fact another empyrean eagle okay so glad we didn't just walk into that shitty block right <laughs> so let's go ahead and three here and hope to draw some nice reckless rages or something else maybe let's see what we can get out of this yikes that was bad okay um shit <laughs> <laughs> that's uh <laughs> i don't have anything nice to say about that all right so i can get in maybe a profitable double block or something but man that is uh oof that was not a good treasure cruise the idea here is to simply try to not die and to do that i have to block two of these things the things that can get pumped the most are these and i have the upside of potentially being able to actually kill the rattle chain so like okay we're at two it's not nothing uh that's actually a decent start so let's try to start here and then see what we can dig out of this and that was super clearly not a spell queller in hand so i oh poops all right dream's dead uh game two so here i want basically all of this lovely removal um we've got three rending valleys we've got two flame blessed bolts i've got a mystical dispute all of these things are pretty good against spirits of course and the cards i do not want are pretty much all named cantripped so i'm going to take out ops first considers second because i do want considers to help cast treasure cruises And that's going to be a boarding plan. So we're going to put in just a mega shit ton of removal. We're going to put in the one of Mystical Dispute. We're going to take out some of the cantrips that can just be dead air because I really just want to spend my time getting rid of as many creatures on the battlefield as possible. Uh, roll. This technically does that, but not well. 
This is much better, not close, even particularly close. The card I want least is Play With Fire. Our opponent is also taking a mull, so that's a good start, I guess. Yeah, so glad to see somebody else saying that they are enjoying this deck because I very clearly do as well. So let's see what their turn one is. Mausoleum Wanderer, nothing, nothing. So I am going to still just, I might just want to play the Spike Field Hazard so I can double red action next turn. All right, well, let's start here. Uh, I want to, no, I just want all the removal spells. And if it means taking myself off of the land for one turn, then so be it. Here, if my opponent wants to just cast like a Watcher to Spheres, I'll be pretty happy to Flame Blessed Bolt that. And it looks like that's not it. This might just be a Supreme Phantom or a Shacklegeist. We are casting a Shacklegeist. Okay, sure. I will still just get rid of this on their turn. I'm not going to like mess around and get cute with any prowess shenanigans. Oh, that's actually pretty good. So let's get ahead and attack in. Play my den and a bugbear and pass. Oh yeah, opponent strongly prefers this more traditional version. And I'm not inclined to disagree. I think that's probably why I still play Azoria Spirits rather than Bant, even in modern where I'm just like, look, man, I just want access to... Okay, so there's the Watcher of the Spheres, which means that they can cast a Rattle Chains if they want to protect here, but that's not really going to work, so I'm going to... And if they want to flash in Rattle Chains now for one mana while they can, then so be it, because I'm going to get the Spike Field Hazard to Rattle Chains anyway, and this thing's still going to take four. So we get to do that. I'm going to cast my Consider and be pretty happy about that. Um, River Glide Pathway. Yes, Graveyard. And I'm going to spike field hazard this, just because I'm not going to get a more efficient use out of that. So here, they're at 12, but they have four cards in hand. Three now. Mausoleum Wanderer, annoying, but resolves. Another Mausoleum Wanderer, very good for just them. And if that last card is Rattle Chains, then I'm going to feel not fantastic about that. But I am totally going to get an attack in. So let's do that. Nothing. Okay, cool. So I don't believe I need to walk into anything. I can just hang out for a turn. So now they are drawing a whole nother card here and I can get rid of a Lord if they play a Lord. Rattle Chains to start. So we're just pumping and racing? Is that your move? All right. I don't know that I like that move, but it's a thing that you have access to opponent. What do I want to do here? I kind of want to Reckless Rage one and then play with fire something else. If I wanted to cast play with fire, then I should have done so in response to the triggers. But I don't actually think that's what I want to do here. I think I want to start. Actually, no, I'm just going to chill. I go to 14. A Mystical Dispute. That's close to perfect. So now I can do this. Get rid of two of their cards guaranteed. And if they want to block, then I will very happily let them. Dang it. <laughs> one can help right so let's go ahead and start here okay so the play with fire is gonna happen okay looks like that is exactly what's gonna happen here so i am going to hmm let's see do i want to just chill and let them take two and go to nine and then buy jeff yes oh what's this aether gust my friend okay so if that card is just an aether gust then i'll be pretty glad to go ahead and do this guarantee get rid of that and keep my friend around and make you take four in the process. What are you targeting? Mystical Dispute. Okay. And if you want to sacrifice this other one just to do that, then yeah, sure. Okay. And I'm going to put that on the bottom because I actually don't want to redraw that. But now I have a creature land. They don't. I can draw Treasure Cruise. They don't have access to that. And the only real thing that they can do is counter something if that's what they're drawing like maybe a mystical dispute of their own or something similar they can flash in something okay as i said they could have flashed in like a naked spell queller or something but if that's not what they had then i'll be pretty happy to relish in the fact that i have companion and they don't so let's see what we get from here a sprite dragon i'll take a sprite dragon okay so hopefully this isn't a spell queller it's not okay and i'm not gonna walk this into a spell queller block either so if that's what you have nice try um Okay, looks like a nothing. Untap, draw a spell. Mm, not quite. So still not walking myself into just a spell queller block. That's like the only way to lose this game, I think, currently. Okay, so rattle chains. Not quite a spell queller, but also not bad for them either. If they want to play like an Empyrean Eagle at instant speed or something, then portable hole sucks, but 
all right so i'm gonna do that let them target and since this thing's dying anyway i might as well do this so now let's see if they have a counter spell or another rattle chains a lofty denial that's fine so remember that time we talked about them potentially having a counter spell in hand and that's why we didn't want to just like cast jeff for no reason but now we uh, don't have to so we can just cast this, play this, be pretty content with our 5-5. Five five. Mausoleum Wanderer, sure thing. I don't know that I like this attack either from the opponent because now they're not going to get to block this. Uh, so let's make this a very real problem and sweet, game three. I'm gonna keep the sideboard the exact same because we know what our plan is. We wanna make sure the creatures are off the table, we wanna establish our own threats and then keep them away from the things like the the good blocks and the shackle geists and whatnot. Just a little banter back and forth with the there a little banter back and forth with our lovely opponent who seems pretty nice okay we're gonna reveal friend jeff one more time oh no 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 duck duck cut your shit to be fair i will be glad to put this sprite dragon down and keep two copies of ledger shredder up that is not bad i don't like mulliganing and i don't like having a hand with no removal but for what it's worth this hand is actually okay so i'm not going to take two damage for the sake of this consider but i will play this in bluff a removal so if they want to just like jam a spectral sailor in my face okay they didn't i was gonna say but if they wanted to they could have and i would have been not necessarily fine with that but it would have happened so here ooh, we have options i'm going to play the ledger shredder first so that's got a couple of benefits of course this does potentially walk me into a draw that contains like supreme verdict or verdict supreme phantom like that um so i can just take this clean attack and i can't really do much about it which is fine if i draw a removal spell that actually tags one of these then dang it um what do i want to do from here then I think I want to play my Ledger Shredder and Consider, and let the Consider dig me into cards like Reckless Rage. Uh, Swift Spear, not fantastic. Spire Bluff Canal, no. In an EI, do I want an EI? Yeah, why the hell would I not want an EI? Um, no, I will draw that. So we're going to skip this turn. Um, we do get to double block if they play something that's not a Lord here, so that part's nice. Oh, did I not? I didn't. Okay, let's press the fast button. Is this another Supreme Phantom? It is. Ew. All right. So now they get to Shacklegeist and tap my Ledger Shredder, which is annoying. I will just block this and take four and go to ten. So let's see if my EIs can draw me into something useful like a Reckless Rage or a um, Rending Valley, because I do have a bunch of those effects. <laughs> oh, let's go. All right. That's exciting. Um... <laughs> All right, uh, Reckless Rage, you do the connives. Oh, hell yeah. Um, play with fire down. Yes. Um, other play with fire down. No. Oh, man. That was a really, really good EI for us. Um, and now I want to Reckless Rage the Lord. I don't want to mess around here. So I need to be a little careful with my life total because I am at nine. So I'm going to still just attack with these. Like the number of actions they can perform next turn is pretty limited. And one of their best routes is what? Land portable hole into Supreme Phantom? Please don't have that. Imperial Eagle. I can deal with that. Okay. That is very good for them, but I can deal with that. A treasure cruise? Man, we are so strong right now. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shredder consider iteration i am going to do none of those i'm gonna double play with fire um pitching one of the treasure cruises pitching i actually really want that land um the consider i think is my worst card now and i want to play you as a blue a third ledger shredder play with fire this kill it holy jesus um that treasure cruise was absolutely insane like getting double reckless rage 
when the opponent had multiple lords is just like so batshit insane like it almost doesn't even make sense how crazy that was so if this is like another imperial eagle i i'd still have a lot of options like i have an ei and a cruise just kind of like waiting here chilling another supreme phantom okay so i'm definitely not going to be able to block that or rather I actually think I should block that so that I can stay above three life. Three life is really scary and it is a portable hold. Okay, sure. I'm not a fan of that happening, but I also can't do much about it. I am really glad to have taken those two lands off the top though. So they're going to take my four six and what can I get from here? A sprite dragon. I actually do want this sprite dragon. Okay, so now I'm going to get to cruise and I guess I should have. No, no, no. What am I doing? We want to grow the sprite dragon. That's why we did that. Um, yes, pitch this. Soul Scar Mage, Spike Field Hazard, Expressive. Okay. Oh crap, I played it. Ah, uh, whatever. Um, I think I'm going to start with Expressive in case I find a four thing like a Rending Valley or something. I did not. Okay. Um, hand. I don't really want either of these, so I guess I'll just do that. Um, I think I just pass. I don't know that I want to play Soul Scar Mage, and I definitely don't want to be below six. I think six is a really crucial number for um for life totals here. <clears throat> yeah. So not gonna lie, I am a little scared of everything they could do now because they could potentially play like yet another lord. Um Oh, this is almost best case, actually. Uh, yes. Another expressive? Oh my god. Yeah, let's do that. So now, if they want to, like, spell Queller, I still have another expressive. Wait, what the f- Um- <laughs> I very much did not want that. Um- <laughs> to do with that <laughs> all right uh discard this soul scar mage that i don't particularly want um all right fine um hand exile i guess um wow that was bad uh let's i do get to force an attack though and i actively want that for the minus one counter okay okay this might not be that bad so if they want to tap these then oh shit please don't do that actually oh sick um I am going to attack with both if you're just going to do it like that, right? Because that can still kill Supreme Phantom if they just like don't block. I not tapping Sprite Dragon was right. I think they should have tapped the Sprite Dragon and then just like taken this three here and then untapped and then potentially drawn a Lord and been able to kill me. Now, if they have a giant pile of nothing, I can actually get there. Uh, I legitimately have no idea what they could have now is this just like a brazen bower i'm gonna try to give myself a chance to win this game ah uh, okay okay opponent said yeah decided to take the line that wins me next game um okay so it looks like they're not going to get to do anything about this, which is fine. I guess they can give something hexproof, lofty denial, yeah, sure, resolves. Um, and I guess actually grows my friend, so whatever. No, but yeah, that was, um, okay, okay. So I think that was a pretty close decision. Um, they also said that they forgot about the Shacklegeist, which makes a lot of sense as to why they allowed me that attack. Uh, that was really scary, though. Um, if they had tapped, then actually I just would have no attacked and then probably cast my Ledger Shredder, but that doesn't mean this, this was really scary. Um, but yeah, good stuff to our opponent, and let's move to the next round. Okay, round six of seven? I think that's where we are. And hand is not bad. Let's keep this. So, we've got Soul Scar Mage, Sprite Dragon, Swift Spear. So, we've got a lot of good attacking power here. I don't know what we're playing against yet. So, I don't know whether I want removal spells or draw spells more, but we will uh, find out shortly. Okay, so we're going to Spire Bluff Canal and jam the Soul Scar Mage. And let's see what our opponent's cooking now. Temple Garden, nothing, which means I am most likely looking at another Winota Gamer. I think that's okay because of our start. So we've got a relatively fast flying clock going on here. If this is just like a prosperous innkeeper, then I don't know that I hate the idea of using like a Swiss beer plus opt to maybe dig for a voice resurgence. Okay. Um, annoying, but beatable. Let's kill this thing. I want to start with the reckless rage so 
I am fully aware that I'm not going to get to attack with the Soul Scar Mage this turn because I'm casting Reckless Rage now. I think that's okay because now I can not worry about this. And if... Oh yeah. Oh, they had nothing. Wow. I am a pretty big fan of when opponents have nothing. So let's do that. Cast my EI here. And if my Ultra Aggro start is going to be... Whoa, that's nice. Um, <clears throat> Hand? I don't have a land though. So I'm going to put, I don't know, it doesn't actually matter because I'm not casting either of these cards. So they are at two. Dang it. I mean, honestly, not dang it because that turns off shock lands and there is no single card. Yeah, okay, good, 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 good. I was going to say there's no single card that Winota can spin them that gets them out of this. So what did we do against Winota earlier? Flame Blessed Bolts, Red Cap Melees, Rending Volleys, Aether Gust. And out came cantrips, and did it take out a play with fire? It might have been one EI. I just like don't remember. It might have been a treasure cruise. No, it wasn't a treasure cruise. I don't remember what we took out earlier. Shoot. Oh well, this is what we're doing. So let's versus Winota. And honestly, I don't even mind taking out a cruise since we are taking out all four copies to consider in this matchup. Oh, a Swift Spear. Duh. Swift Spear is easily the worst threat against a deck with like a million elves and ground pounders and voice of resurgence. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be our lovely Winota plan. Let's take out the cards that I don't particularly want, put in a mega shit ton of removal, and uh, let's go from there. So our friend Jeff, once again, joins the fray. Our hand is um, surprisingly fine. Because of the spike field hazard, I'm still going to get to clear creatures out quite a bit, and this specifically helps to take care of any copies of uh, Voice of Resurgence. So with our opponent taking a mulligan as well, I actually do like where this goes. Um, Things to be a little careful of. I don't know how the interaction between Soul Scar Mage and Flame Blessed Bolt works because I'm not dealing damage to the creature. Um, deals two damage if that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it actually still works the way I want it to. If I have Soul Scar Mage and I use this to target a um, Voice of Resurgence, I'm still gonna get the exile. I Ganjo? Into what, Deafening Silence? No, not Deafening Silence. I guess I'm just gonna cast this anyway in attack. So I would love to draw another land, especially a blue land, um, but if this is just like a Prosperous Innkeeper, then I don't necessarily mind. Oh, hey, hey, all right. I get to use this here um, and get that thing the hell out of my face. And I'm just gonna do this. And yes, the other way around would have done a little more damage there. Um, I still think I like the line we took though, just like the way we did it. But let's see what ends up happening here. If they like Brutal Cathar or something, I don't really know that I care that much. I care a little, but like, I don't know if I care that much if they Brutal Cathar. And if I draw a blue land, then I'll be very happy to start casting these. And even if I don't draw a blue land, I might still just play the Spike Field Hazard. Unless they play a Mana Dork this turn, then I'm definitely keeping this to just like shoot it right down. But either way, let's see what they actually do and let's see what we actually draw before I start making decisions, right? A Rending Valley. Okay, so here I'm going to get my attack in, for sure. Obviously, they're not blocking, but we'll feel pretty... Actually, no, I'm not going to block. Or, I'm sorry, I'm, I am going to play my Spike Field Hazard just, like, as this. Because it might actually tempt our opponent into just jamming Winota here. Um, doing that gives me the ability to just, like, cast my Rending Valley, and then I can untap and hopefully just, like... Again, I still want to draw Blue Land, but I think this... A Kenrith... Uh, we can deal with Kenrith. So I take this attack, that's whatever. And this actually plays quite nicely for- NICE! Hell yeah, pay two life. Uh, that's close to perfect, because now I can attack, and because I have the Soul Scar Mage, Rending Molly's just gonna turn this into a 1-1 if they try to block something. So, 
I'm still going to do that. So you take six, that's a one one. And I still have the second rending volley for Winota herself, which is exactly what we need to be able to not just die, right? Um, if they want to pay three to gain five with Kenrith, that's probably the only thing that saves them at this point, but like, I'm cool with that. And they can't like cast Winota here because I'm just gonna kill it with Rending Volley. So let's see what actually ends up happening. That blue land was super timely though. Being able to cast my Sprite Dragon is just like such a big deal on this field. Cause the Ground Pounders, as you can see, are just like fine, but not. But the Flyers here are absolutely great. If they cast what? They can cast Cat Car to gain them to life and be able to crew against my Soul Scar Mage. I guess that's a thing. But even then, I can still just like jam Sprite Dragon, maybe play another spell. Even this doesn't make me the saddest. Okay, we pass and do nothing. <clears throat> Ooh. I actually think it's appropriate to cast this EI here because I'm not guaranteed to win this turn anyway. So I want to make sure that I'm able to uh, Rending Valley my Sprite Dragon. That's fine. So we get to get our prowess up. I do have another Sprite Dragon I can cast if I see a blue land. And like I said, since I'm not guaranteed to win this turn, I think it actually is more appropriate to give myself access to more cards. Because they're currently only working with a couple of 1-1s, one even if one of them is Kenrith, and one more card in hand. So I will simply press our advantage that we have currently. So let's resolve our EI now. In hand we have a Steam Fence Shredder Soul Scarp Mage. Okay, okay. That's actually pretty good. So I want you in hand, and I'm definitely going to play you, and I don't mind going to 15 to do it. I want to cast Ledger Shredder first. I very highly doubt this second spell is something that's a responsive bit, but just in case it's another Rending Valley, that'll give me the leeway to connive this turn. But I think I'll just end up doing this. Access to two plus one counters? Yeah. So you can give yourself a couple of plus one counters, but that still walks into my Rending Valley, which is nice. Or they can give... Prosperous Innkeeper plus one counters. Um, okay. Yeah, you got me. You just go to three. And then you can go to eight with your ability, untap, and I can still kill at end of turn with Rending Valley, untap, Sprite, Dragon, something. Yeah, that sounds okay. The more time they're spending doing, like, this kind of stuff, right, because I'm attacking for four, they're going to f um, gain five, so that's up to eight, which I don't mind. And then they can untap and try to resolve like a Winota or a Cat Car or something. A Cat Car is legitimately annoying. Winota is not because we have Rending Valley. And this doesn't give Indestructible or anything like that, right? They can pay five to reanimate, which is something that's good to know because they have Mana Confluence, but that's really it. The other modes aren't ex actually threatening. I guess of note, if they want to pay five, they do have to pay a life, which is really important considering our board right now. Okay, so it looks like we're putting plus one counters on the Prosperous Innkeeper. So if we're going to do this again, then I'm going to let them block and then I'm going to Rending Valley the Kenrith. Dromoka's Command. Okay, okay, I see you. Um, so let's connive first. Play with Fire is very good, but I'm going to pitch the Sprite Dragon and a plus one counter and fight. So that's going to just not be great here. So I'm going to get to prowess up to a 3-4, and yeah, that's just bad times for a... Okay, yeah, they scooped. Um, cool. So one more round to go, and then hopefully top eight. Fingers crossed. All right, last Swiss round, we are playing Simple Liquid. All right, not a name I've seen before, so I have no idea what they could be piloting. But to be honest, I also don't play enough of this format to know what people are piloting, even when I do know their names anyway, so... Ooh, a Yorian. Okay. So that means we're probably fighting against some control -y pile. I don't know whether it's Niv and somebody other than Claudio is actually playing this deck or whether it's simply blue-white control and they're choosing to play Yorian as their companion. Or there could be playing like one of those Oath of Kaya piles, which I sincerely hope they are not. But if they are, then I don't know. So be it, I guess. <laughs> but let's see what ends up actually happening here. Hallowed Fountain, and we do the untap. Pathway, not exactly what I want here. Uh, expressive is definitely a thing that I want though. So let's play this and get our attack on. I thought I clicked the no possible play button already. All right, what happens under turn two? All right, so it looks like this is in fact just gonna be some blue white control. So let's start here. And I don't think I'm gonna walk my expressive into a Removal, I'm sorry, um, like a sensor type effect or a Dwari disruption. If they play either of those, I don't really need to walk this into that. So I can just kind of like 
chill here and see if they just want to cycle a sensor or something, maybe. Blue white. What's this? Oh, sure, 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 sure. Just cycling a shark typhoon, not actually getting a shark out of it. You got it, opponent. So things that I don't necessarily want to see. I don't really want to see cards like absorb for three mana. I that's okay. So let's walk this into a counter spell and then see if. Oh my god, we're just gonna get it? What? Um, hand, deck, exile. Because I do actually want to play this now. So I'm gonna attack first in case this is a cycled shark for one. I can kill the shark with a spike field hazard. Um, but now that we're in blockers, I'll pretty happily do this and take them to what? Nine? 14, so eight if everything happens. I ganjo. Uh, yeah, you got it. Okay, so now I am just gonna play this then. If they use Iganjo, then the likelihood of them having a Supreme Verdict right now is a lot lower than I thought it was going to be. If they still have it right now, then so be it. You got me. Yeah, you got me. Okay. Um, but I still get to just like Sprite Dragon into Treasure Cruise, which is dope. What did I do? Oh, I didn't type that for a red. That's on me. All right, Sprite Dragon, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not bad. So here, this is actually fine though, because like I can still Sprite Dragon opt play with fire and this can, okay, the land was actually pretty good for me. So what do I want to do? I want to Steam Vents first, cast Sprite Dragon now. And then I have access to both opt and play with fire, which I like, and this plays at least decently around one oh consider is actually pretty good too uh yeah this at least plays decently around a copy of the wandering emperor so if they want a wandering emperor and then just like oh my god is that a shark oh it damn it um <laughs> all right fine um what's the wording activate loyalty abilities anytime you could cast an instant okay so i'm not going to get to do anything before she gets priority here all right, so you are going to do that. That's fine. I guess I'll just do this first. Um, and they are going to get the gain to two life out of that, so that's going to happen. Um, but I am going to cast a consider here. Yes, I want that in my graveyard. So you still take four, go to seven. And this still doesn't make me terribly happy to be in this scenario, but it's also not just like the end of the world. So let's cast a ledger shredder first see what if anything they have smart to say about this now i'm going to cast the other one and connive the first one see what if anything we have to say about this okay now please for the love of god do not have another copy of the wandering emperor that would really suck oh come on <laughs> go away uh, i guess i'll still try this so at least if i do it like this and they have like a sensor or something then all right so least that's a thing, but now I'm just like dead to a Supreme Verdict. Man, how annoying. You're supposed to have an 80 card deck opponent. Uh, okay, play this by my lovely companion. And I guess this is where we're starting. So they do only have one card here. Uh, I guess two now, but oh man, the stupid farewell. <laughs> Boo. -hoo 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 -hoo. All right, I'm mad. Um, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, please don't just find a absorb. That would be awful. Okay, that's not good, but it's not nothing. The double wandering emperor gaining them to five life though is absolutely terrible. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so omen of the sea here means that if they find a single land, they do have the ability to what? Buy Yorian, cash it in, and redraw cards off of the um, omen of the sea. So that's annoying. So let's see what ends up actually happening here. And Field of Ruin helps against my Denita Bug Bear too, so that's pretty annoying. So let's go ahead, get an attack in. If they want to block with this, then my Reckless Rage will actually be a little helpful because I can pay the um the ward cost. So that's not stone nothing. So let's see if that's what they want to do here. Okay. Now, if this is going to be a copy of something like, say, um what am i thinking like dovin's veto then consider me sad for the next forever oh come on not like this not like this don't you dare dovin's veto my reckless rage oh okay so we're just floating mana okay i'm not happy about that trade but i guess i recognize that it happens and can move along with life now um oof but how am i gonna beat this yorian that's coming then i mean or that but that is 
technically a little easier to beat than Yorian, but I'm not feeling great about the rest of this game now. Um, Reckless Rage number two, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. I very much expect this to get countered by an absorb even. Okay. All right. Well, that's game one. So against blue white control, I want the negate and the disputes. I want this. I don't think I want red cap melee. I'm sorry, rending valley. Um, yeah, no, I'm good on those. So here I want no reckless rages and I can take out the spike field hazard. Yeah. All right. Simple enough. So let's do that against blue white control. Farewell was a freaking beating. Exiling the entire graveyard so that we couldn't cast Treasure Cruise was absolutely awful. All right, so now we get to go ahead and reveal Jeff, and our hand is uh, actually pretty good. So let's keep this, and if they like portable hole my first couple of threats, then yeah, sure, I'm sad about that. But most other things, if I'm being honest, I'm kind of okay with like we've got double soul scar mage for a pretty fast clock we've got a mystical dispute for say a turn three narset or something equally annoying like that and so far okay a play with fire is not terrible um i don't think i want to consider i'm just gonna do this and deal them one okay now let's go to the end step cast our lovely consider if they counter it with like a sensor or something, honestly, I don't really care. Sprite Dragon is actually pretty good, so I will draw that. So having reasonable threats, um, Supreme Verdict, is pretty decent for the home team, right? Um, so here I'm going to actually cast my friend, give myself an extra turn to attack with it, etc., etc., and see what comes of this. And of course, I'm not touching any buttons here because I still want to counter a turn three Narset if that's what they're going to be working with here. Uh, what's this? Fateful Absence. I will take a clue token. Be pretty happy to take a clue token, actually. Man, playing this matchup, though, makes me really, really miss Spirits already. Because, like, for Spirits, like, this matchup is just, like, whatever, who cares, right? Um... It's nowhere near as annoying. Do I want to play with fire the face or just untap? No, I want I want the scry. I actively want the scry. Give me like an expressive or something to do with the scry. A ledger shredder? I actually don't know that I want that. Exactly the thing I asked for. Nice. Um, okay, okay. So I want you in hand. I want you in hand. Yes. Play this and just go ahead and attack. Having a mystical dispute to the face doesn't really feel great here. Um or Mystic of Dispute, whatever the four mana sweeper is. Yeah, that thing. Um, so like that doesn't feel good. I actually do want to fire one of these off. Oh, nice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was a pretty good draw three. I kind of want to try to opt into a threat. Um, have we made our land drop? Scry, cruise, play the pathway. Yes, we have made our land drop. And we're holding up a negate now. Okay. Okay, so I have the combination of Dispute, Negate, um, a Shock for the face, and holding up my um, Clue token for the end of turn. So I'm uh, fairly satisfied with what we have right now. Another consider. I would have preferred a threat, but I did just put a ledger. Bleh. I did just put a ledger shredder on the bottom, so I guess I can't complain too much about that. So I want you in my hand. Um, exile, and I'll just pay the two mana for that. So. Not terribly happy about the way we have drawn, but I don't know that having just like, uh, I will actually be fairly happy to do that. All right, get her out of my face. So if this turn is just like it's a fairy, I'll be really happy to just go ahead and like dispute and stuff here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So they can't fire up their this yet either, which is nice. Um, so I think I am supposed to just start with Den and a Bugbear and right one, two, three, four, or do I want to just like buy Jeff and then hold up considers. I think I want to just buy Jeff and hold up considers. So now I can make my land drop next turn and that would enable me to another wandering emperor. Well, that sucks. Um, how are we so good at finding these? I need our opponent to be a lot less good at finding wandering emperors. Like they've only gone through a few cards in their 80 card deck and have already found two copies in each game. Um, no, don't put that in my graveyard. I want to pitch that for the ability. A Ledger Shredder is actually pretty playable here. So let's do that. Okay, now let's try a Knife. 
I don't want that. I also don't want that. I want the flying threats, I think. Ugh, dilemma. I do want more threats, but I don't want this threat. I also don't particularly want that threat, but it is not nothing. So I'm just gonna chill here, see what they wanna do about this ledger shredder, and then I can Sekenzen into turn and Swiss Beer and Denita Bugbear and hopefully like overwhelm them with things. That's an option I might have access to. So let's try that. What's this? A portable hole. Okay. Um, yeah, you got it. That's just gonna happen. So let's try this, especially since I actively want the scry. I will keep that. Okay, untap. And I want to play the haste threat. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to use the land threat. And I suppose that I could have, um, oops. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Um, that sucked. Um, <laughs> Oh my god, that is so bad. Oh, that is such a bad click. All right, well, I'm gonna use my red mana or my blue mana. Oh my god, that is so bad. Oh, Christ. I'm so mad at myself right now. Um, still gonna take them down to four, assuming they man up and block my Swiss Spear here. Um, but I am really mad about that. Oh my god. That is such a... Yeah, sure. Oh my god. <laughs> That was so terrible. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> oh my god, they went to two. Is this a Teferi? What are we doing here? A Yorian. Okay, so Yorian has no job here, which means if I draw one point of damage, um, then we do win. Hmm, boo. Um, I mean, deserved. Still mad. Um, god. I'm so mad at myself for that right now. Okay, okay. So unless this is like a counter spell or a removal spell, um, we might still get there, but that doesn't make me any less mad about the way we've played this game. Um, I'm so pissed. <laughs> All right, let's submit our deck. Um, oh my God. That was just like an unreal amount of terrible play all in one game and I that's the kind of game where like I am home and I want to go home after playing that game right all right so let's go ahead and reveal our friend Jeff here and oop, our hand is uh, actually this is fine so we get to play a turn two letter shredder we get to have an EI and a negate for the eventual wandering emperor <clears throat> and I have both a consider and an opt to finish playing with two here, so oops. So this is still like pretty playable. Let's see what we have now. A s do not want that in my graveyard. I want that now actually. And a consider. Okay. So I can just cast this and more than likely expect it to catch the business end of a counter spell like say mystical dispute or a sensor or something similar i can cast swift spear that seems like a very low reward play so no fateful absence or anything is actually pretty nice um no narset no narset <laughs> that sucks um okay so i want to swift spear or do i want to ei into a burn spell I think I want a Swift Spear and just deal two to this and hold up Negate. I don't particularly feel like, yeah, no, 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 no. So this especially sucks if this is a missed, um, Supreme Verdict off the top. Like if this is a Supreme Verdict off the top, to be honest, I think we've lost this game. Um, oh, come on. Um, that sucks. I'm gonna opt. Considering doesn't do me too, too much good yet. Uh, I will draw that. Let's expressive. I want dispute in hand, canal in the deck, steam vents this turn. Upside, I do have a lot more cards than they do right now, even considering the fact that they have Narsa and I haven't been able to, to actually use my good cards. Um, things, what is this? Are you field of ruining me? I do have a basic mountain in my deck. No, you're buying Yorian, okay. At least we can say, uh, I actually don't want that in my graveyard. I wanna draw that, a consider, okay. So the consider doesn't do me any good, um, but being able to hold up double counter spell does do me some good. So at least we can try that, right? Like I can mystical dispute the Yorian and then attack Narsan on the way down and resolve a treasure cruise. Like that is a thing that I have access to. I do want like, ugh, go away. Um, I actually think I'm supposed to negate this. Okay, so that got negated. And they had to, come on, will you stop just having everything? This is kind of getting absurd now. Um, so let's 
Uh, I have not drawn a card this turn, consider. Sprite Dragon. Uh, no, I do not want that in the graveyard. And a play with fire. Okay, okay, fine. So I will actually get to play a little magic right now, looks like. So let's attack the Narset. See what, if anything, they're going to try to do here. Aether Gust. Um, yeah. I'm going to dispute this because th doing it like this at least lets me resolve my um, treasure cruise. So if they don't dispute this back... So now we're going to finish hitting the Narset. Do it like that so that we get the three damage on here and a little bit of extra. Oh my God, why? Um, <laughs> seriously? Uh, all right, put on top. Um, man, we uh, can't have anything. They exiled the Orion. okay. So let's see what they find off of Narset. If there is any luck in this universe, they just whiff. Absorb? Blech. So I am looking very much forward to not really playing this game is what we're saying. Um, I'm just going to run out the absorb. Oh crap, I could have just bought Jeff. Whoops. I am super clearly a little tilted right now because of how bad this round's draws have been. Um, so let's buy Jeff. And yes, they can Field of Ruin, my Denita Bugbearer. Um, but I can't really do anything about that. So like, it's just going to be what it is. Uh, I do have a mountain, which at least is nice. Glacial Fortress, you got it. Can we draw another den maybe? No? Okay. Um, watch them just like tap three for Mystical Dispute. Okay. So now let's see what comes of this. Six mana? Oh, oh, jeez. Okay. Whew. Just a giant march. Got it. So we've got three cards in hand from the opponent. This Narset is really fucking my day up right now. Like I could have resolved this Treasure Cruise a couple of times and not being able to is absolutely making this game uh, borderline unplayable. It's pretty bad. So let's play this. And to be fair, I haven't been playing well at all this game. So like, I can't complain too much. I'm going to, but it's not. Okay, okay, okay. Whatever, I'll pack it up. So that's going to be potentially the tournament, but you know, it is what it is. Good, good, good job, opponent. And there we have it. So we went five and two in the Pioneer Challenge. And to be honest, I think it was okay. We ended up getting 13th. And that's kind of what I was waiting for to see um, what happened when we were all said and done. And I guess I will apologize a little bit for how tilted I was in the match with Blue White. Yes, I could make excuses as to what happened. But let's be real. I just got tilted off and acted mad because of it. And in the game we won, probably shouldn't have because of the really bad misplays we made. So you know i'm human but the deck performed admirably we got to beat up on some pretty decent matchups including beating winota twice which was really impressive for our deck we got to draw a lot of cards between ledger shredders cruises fake draw via expressive iteration and the only card that i would actually try to change out of this deck would probably be just like the sprite dragons even though sprite dragon is pretty impressive sometimes I don't think I will be changing it anytime soon, but it usually just feels like the worst card in here, and I don't know that that's a problem that's really worth fixing for this archetype. I think that's just something that I kind of accept when I play this. Like, untapping with a Ledger Shredder because you can cast two spells in the same turn just feels super godlike every time. Sprite Dragon can get absolutely huge, but before then, it's really bad, and it doesn't necessarily play nicely with Reckless Rage, and that's just kind of what it is, right? So you accept that when you build your deck and you know that going into it. But other than that, a lot of this was really strong. Like we got to draw a lot of cards. We got to have a great aggro plan when we needed it. Our sideboard cards came through in miraculous fashion when they did. I don't know that I would change anything out of the sideboard, but I probably would put one or two more pieces of counter magic in. But that's probably just speaking from the standpoint of somebody who's been playing spirits for four years. So I'm just like so used to having counter magic that I just want it in every deck. And the fact that this deck doesn't have as much as I'd like, I think that's more of a play style complaint than an actual complaint about the power level of the deck. Because this deck is powerful as shit. Like we got some really sweet games going in. And... Yeah, that's really going to be my input. I think this deck was pretty strong. Like we did get bopped by a couple of the giant piles of removal decks like the Saltai control deck or Saltai midrange whatever you want to call that and then blue white control just having all of the nuts but that will happen sometimes too like we absolutely like got to nut draw some people today too so overall not a bad performance i like i said last time i would choose to play this again this deck's fun so 
if you're looking for a pioneer deck to get into that's relatively easy to play at the base level but powerful enough to be worth your time to get good with yeah this is one of the decks i would recommend so if you like is it prowess let me know what are you doing different are you playing more or different creatures maybe Either way, I'm really curious to see what everybody is doing in Pioneer, because this is a format that I'm taking a lot of time with and exploring. Haha, <laughs> that was not a pun. It is now. But let me know what all of y'all are doing in this format. If you're playing Spirits, which version of Spirits are you playing? And that's going to be our question for today. As always, if you like what you're watching, make sure to actually click like on the video and let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I'll see y'all in the next one.